I'm going to give a brief explanation on a couple of papers related to the origin of the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2. And the first paper is unnatural evolutionary processes of SARS-CoV-2 variants and the possibility of deliberate natural selection. And the, this paper is uh, written by Tanaka and Miyazawa, both of whom are from Japan. I'll just give uh, an explanation on the main part or kind of uh, the part which had the greatest impact. And that part is figure two. This is a figure two. And let me explain what's going on in this figure. Here, we can see the accession number in the GenBank. And GenBank is a kind of a database. There are lots of sequences of genomes are registered. And these are the registered numbers here. And so each has a kind of a unique sequence sampled from somewhere and by submitter from various countries. And this part, so these names illustrates uh, the kind of mutations in the spike protein. So for example, uh, S373P means that the 373rd uh, amino acid in the spike protein is uh, converted from S to P, uh, serving to uh, proline. You can see these blanks here, here, and here uh, going like stairs, right? From here to here. So let me explain what this means. And these colored parts mean that this, for example, this part has a mutation, uh, G142D, but this part lacks this mutation. So this figure means that there are various reversion mutants uh, where only one of the uh, amino acid of the spike protein is reversed to the original Wuhan strain. And you can find all the variations of only one uh, reverse mutation included in the spike protein, except for N501Y. This kind of mutational pattern is not usually observed because various mutations are accumulated usually step by step. And the one explanation is, you know, uh, someone in the laboratory tried to mutate each uh, amino acid of the spike protein into the original uh, Wuhan strain to see the effect of that mutation. And they were doing this kind of experiment in the laboratory and uh, by accident, or in the worst case, deliberately released these uh, mutants uh, with wide variations. I don't know whether it's intentional or it's just an accident, but it's quite, you know, kind of astonishing that these kind of variations can be observed. And uh, of course, uh, these data are registered from various submitters. So, uh, from that viewpoint, it's not the kind of uh, mistakes in the uh, step of registration. Some people say that this kind of reversion can occur through homologous recombination. But to realize the homologous recombination, the interval between the mutations is too short, like here and here. So some of the mutations in the spike protein are located nearby. So in between the genome sequence, RNA sequence is very short. The length of the RNA sequence is too short to realize this kind of uh, reversions only in one of them. So it's easy to make reversions in both of the amino acids 
here, here, and here. But as I explained in the previous figure, uh, we can find a sequence. Only one of these are reversed to the original strain. But the length of the sequence in between is too short. So why it is hard to attain? To explain that, uh, we have to explain what homologous recombination is. To explain that, I use a figure from this paper. This one is very easy to understand uh, what homologous recombination is. So in the homologous recombination, here's the RNA. The cell tries to replicate this sequence and like this. But uh, by some accident, this part is detached from this sequence. And if another sequence has the same sequence here, this part sticks to uh, another sequence, then start reading this part. And as a result, uh, we can make a, a recombinant where the sequence of the uh, first half is the same as this black one. And uh, the latter half is the same as this sequence. So in this way, we can make a recombinant. But to make this recombinant, as this figure explains, the black sequence and the brown sequence has to have some length in common, like this. But when the interval between these two mutations is too short, that kind of recombination cannot take place. That's why this kind of mutation cannot be generated through homologous recombination in the natural environment. And actually our paper, this is written by me and Matsumoto. And this paper also evaluated uh, reversion mutants through statistical method. And this figure shows that uh, BA1 has the most pure reversions, which means uh, the sequence that only contains uh, reversions to the original strain and not other uh, point mutations. So actually BA1 has uh, the largest numbers of uh, pure reversion mutants compared with uh, other variants. Here in this figure, we counted when the pure reversions emerged and compared with the emerging of the that uh, variance in total. So in case of BA1, the pure reversion mutants appear in the earliest uh, stages of the spread. So actually this is, uh, the blue line shows the emergence of pure reversions and the orange line shows the uh, count of the total number of that variant. So Blue, the peak of the blue precedes the peak of the orange lines, which means that pure reversions appears before the peak of the community spread. So in case of homologous recombinations through community spread, these two peaks should coincide with each other because recombinations takes place between the new variant and the uh, conventional variant. So that should occur as the uh, number of community spread increases. But so in, actually in other variants, the peak of the p emergence of pure reversions and the peak of the total number of uh, variants overlap almost always overlap with each other like this. So the orange uh, lines and the blue lines usually overlap. But 
only in case of BA1, the peak is separate from each other. It cannot be the result of a homologous recombination in the community spread. It should be available in the beginning of the emergence of the variant, which suggests this kind of uh, recombinance was leaked from a laboratory. Uh, as we have written in the discussion part of our paper, actually, we do not know what happened. These are just statistical analyses, so we can't say definitively that the Omicron variant uh, originates from a laboratory. But actually, that chance is uh, very high. So we should investigate all the laboratories in the world that can carry out this kind of research. In case of nuclear physics, they have an agency like IAEA. We should impose a strict rule to uh, restrict their uh, research activities so that we may not face this kind of pandemic anymore in the future.